Hello, my name is Tim Shoebridge. Today I'm taking a long, hard and, dare I say, critical look at the Sequential Profit X. Right, so before we get into the synth itself, uh, I think uh, it might be best to just take a few minutes out just for me to tell you where I'm coming from with the Prophet X. What is it about it that appeals to me uh, and my history with it, basically. Um, so, you know, when it was announced, uh, I really was very excited about it because for me, it is the perfect instrument. It's combining samples with traditional subtractive synthesis methods. Um, and for me, that's, that's just something I'm really, really interested in, not just in playing samples uh, and applying a filter to them, but actually manipulating the samples. You know, for example, I've got the, the Jupiter XM here from Roland. I really, really like the synthesizer. It's got uh, you know, fantastic capabilities. It's got thousands and thousands of really good, high quality samples in it. And you can, you know, you can filter, you can apply envelopes, you can modulate and stuff like that, but you can't manipulate the samples. You can't, you know, reverse them or, or set loop points and, and really sort of play around with them. You're stuck with the samples as they are. And although they're very, very high quality, uh, you can't really sort of like go into sort of like unexplored territory with them. And that's where, for me, the Prophet X really excels. <music> Right, so let's just talk about the architecture of the Prophet X, and I have to say it is very impressive. Uh, so the Prophet X is fundamentally an eight voice polyphonic synthesizer. It does have some other voicing options. There's a 16 voice option and a 32 voice option. We'll cover those a bit later in the video. Um, but it's eight voice polysynth. Uh, each voice has got four digital oscillators, and they're purely digital oscillators purely digitally generated waveforms, but we've got four oscillators per voice. We've also got one analog low pass filter per voice, and we've got four envelope generators and four LFOs per voice. A very comprehensive mod matrix, uh, which is nice to see, and we've got a very nice uh, set of dual stereo effects at the end of the signal path. So it's, it's a really nice uh, architecture, uh, lots of capability for modulation going on here. But let's talk about uh, some of those elements in a little bit more detail. So of those four digital oscillators that I mentioned, they are actually of two distinct types. There are two very traditional looking oscillators, uh, you know, a variety of traditional waveforms. Um, you can detune them, 
Um, you can synchronize them. Uh, there's a slot control so that you can add some sort of like pseudo random detune to them as well. Uh, the other two digital oscillators are purely sample playback oscillators. Uh, they don't even call them oscillators on the front panel, they just call them instruments, instrument one and instrument two. Now, obviously you can still get them to play back uh, you know, traditional waveforms if the sample that you've chosen is a sample of a synth that is playing a traditional waveform. So you can get all four oscillators to play traditional waveforms if you want, but obviously the power of instruments one and two is in the fact that they can play, you know, very long, very complex samples, uh, you know, with evolving textures, very complex waveforms. Um, now those samples can be mono and they can be stereo. So now is a good time to talk about the stereo capabilities of the Prophet X. So the two traditional oscillators are generating a monophonic signal, but the two sample playback oscillators are generating a stereo signal. Now all of those signals is going into a mixer section, and you can see it here with the screen where we mix those values, but not only can we mix the values, but we can also pan the oscillators. We can set exactly where each oscillator is gonna sit in the stereo field. So what we've got here is a stereo signal path starting at the oscillators and then going downstream through the synthesizer. Now when that stereo signal path gets to the filter section, the filters actually maintain that stereo quality because we haven't just got one low pass filter per voice, we've actually got two. Uh, two identical low pass filters, one for the left channel and one for the right channel. And yes, you can offset the cutoffs of those two filters the same way that you can with say uh, a Moog Matriarch for example and you can create some really nice stereo effects with the filters. Right, let's have a listen to this filter. Nice sounding. It's very polite. <laughs> it's not aggressive at all. Right, let's listen to this sort of left right channel um, offsetting of the cutoff. So um, I'll set this halfway. Then in the menu, here it is stereo split, it's called. It goes plus and minus.
So it's obviously it's uh, increasing the cutoff in one channel while decreasing it in the other channel. Sounds very, very nice. And we can modulate it, or we don't actually modulate the split, um, but we actually modulate each of the cutoffs individually. So we, as a destination in the mod matrix, we've got cutoff left and cutoff right. So let's um, turn down the cutoff to start off with. Let's uh, whack a bit of modulation in. Use an LFO. And it sounds like actually, let's be sensible. Let's go negative with one and positive with the other. We're going to use the same LFO. Now in terms of modulation capabilities of the Prophet X, as I said before, we've got four LFOs per voice. That's a lot of LFOs. Uh, and we've also got four envelope generators per voice. We've got um, two uh, auxiliary envelopes, and then we've got a dedicated filter envelope and a dedicated amplitude envelope. All four of those uh, envelope generators are loopable as well. Um, so a lot of modulation capability. The modulation matrix itself, uh, there are 16 slots for you. Uh, which is quite a lot. Uh, you know, a Moog one has got 20. Um, this has got 16. But as well as that 16, it's also got what they call uh, fixed mod slots uh, towards the end of the list here, uh, where you can, where you can't choose what the uh, the source of the modulation is. That's fixed, uh, but you can choose whatever desti destinations you like. So you've actually got 27 slots in total.
Uh, the other thing to mention while we're talking about modulations are the performance controls. The keyboard uh, has aftertouch. We've got the standard pitch and mod wheels, but we also have these little digital sliders here. Um, I first saw them on the Profit 12, I believe. They're also on the Pro 2. They're probably on every uh, modern uh, synth from Sequential these days. Uh, but they really are nice. Obviously, you can assign them how you like in the mod matrix. Um, you've got, you know, they're very, very sensitive. You've got great feedback with the little LED strips. Uh, they're a really, really good idea. I like them a lot. Right, so let's take a look at the sample playback capabilities of the Prophet X. Uh, and it all comes down to these two little guys here, these two sample playback oscillators. I'm going to select the bottom one here. And the first thing I'm going to show you is the way that samples are organized in the Prophet X. They're basically organized in banks, within banks, categories, and within categories we get instruments. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If I hold down this group button and keep it held down, you'll see it says factory there. Now if I turn this type control, we go from factory to something called user number 30, and then add on one, two, three, up to six. Now what you will see on your Profit X may or may not be, probably will be different to that. Uh, factory is the factory bank and it's got all of that 150 gigabytes of samples in it uh, and every Profit X has that. You'll only have user banks if you've actually imported your own samples into your synth. Uh, I can't remember how many banks there are, I think it's quite a lot. Uh, I've got uh, a user bank number 30 um, but obviously it could be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up to 30 and then beyond. Um, so I've only just got one bank with, with samples in and it's user bank number 30. Then we've got add on one, two, three, four, five, six. Now these are banks. Um, if you were to buy uh, an official add on pack from 8DO and install it on your synth, then they go into add on banks. Uh, each pack goes into its own bank. So I've got here six add on banks. Um, so once we've chosen a bank, let's go with factory. Then uh, we'll see here, so the F stands for factory. If I was to change it to uh, user 30, we've got U30. So you can see at the very beginning uh, the bank that you're dealing with. So F for factory. And then after that, we've got a number and then a category, basically, or a type. Um, now the categories, it's nice to have categories. It's nice to know where to go to find samples. We've got things like ambience, bass, brass, choir, cinematic drums, effects, blah, 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 blah keyboard piano, string, synth, solo voice, and winds. There's 17 different categories, so it's nice to have these categories. Uh, and what you have to do is you have to select a category, like winds, and then we use this instrument control to scroll through the available samples. Well, they're not samples, they're instruments. I'll come on to that in a minute. A weird thing is that the first slot in a category is always empty. I have no idea why. Um, but instruments start at number two for some strange reason. Uh, but here we are, these are instruments. So these are not samples, these are collections of samples. Um, and this is something, you know, when, you, when it comes to doing your own uh, samples and importing them into the Profit X, and I'll cover that a little bit later in the, in the video, uh, you have to group your samples together uh, into an instrument, and then it's the instrument that you import into your synth. Um, now the instrument is basically a key map, and if you don't know about um, sampling, you haven't done it before, basically it's a way of mapping samples across your keyboard. At one extreme, you might just have one single sample, and it plays across the entire keyboard. Obviously the pitch of it will be adjusted, depending on what note you're playing, but you have one sample. That's just one extreme. At the other extreme, you might have multiple samples per note. Um, you might have um, velocity layers set up so that when you pl play a note 
gently, you get one sample played. When you play it a little bit harder, you get another sample played. If you play it really hard, you get another sample played. Um, you know, all of that adds realism to the sort of the, the instruments that you are, uh, you, you know, you're replicating. Uh, and it might be actually you've got multiple samples for each velocity range per note, uh, what we call round robins. Uh, and the idea behind that is that, you know, every time you pluck a string of a guitar, it doesn't sound exactly the same. Uh, so you might sample uh, the pluck of a guitar string multiple times and then have that as a round robin. So every time you press a key, the same key, it's a different randomly chosen sample that gets played. It makes the ha you know everything sound more realistic. So all of that kind of stuff can be going on inside these instruments. The unfortunate thing is uh, that you have no idea what's going on in these instruments at all. You don't know how many samples there are, how many layers there are, or anything. Um, you know, you can, by trial and error and using your ear, you can try and figure out what's going on, but there's no way of accessing that information and there's no way of accessing the samples inside these instruments at all. Right, back to the Prophet X. Uh, let's look at what you can do with these instruments and the samples that they contain. What can we manipulate here with the, with the samples and the instruments? So I've got one of my samples selected here. It's, it's from my nylon sample library. So it's a single pluck of a string. There's no looping involved here. Um, what can we do? Well, if we look at this section here, we'll see that there is a reverse button. So we can play the sample backwards just by pressing a button. In fact, all the samples that the, um, that the instrument contains will now be reversed. Trouble is with these samples, there's a long decay uh, off the back. So what we're going to need to do is actually edit the uh, the end point. So that's something else that we can do with samples is actually adjust the start and the end points how we like. Now we're doing this to all the samples. Now obviously spread across this keyboard, the samples in the upper registers will be a lot shorter than the samples in the lower registers. So when we adjust the start and end points here, uh, it's kind of a, a sort of a relative adjustment. Uh, the end point is always 999. Uh, that's, that's the end point. So uh, let's bring it further forward. So reversing's very cool, uh, adjusting start and end points, very cool. And we can loop. And once we loop, um, we can set the region within the sample, within all the samples that we're gonna loop around. Um, now this is you know, somewhere where the, the Prophet X kind of you know, falls well behind a, a Waldorf quantum iridium, and that's the display because on the Waldorf synths, you've got this beautiful big display. You can see the waveform. You can see, you can zoom into it. You can see exactly what you're doing. Here, we don't have any view of the waveform at all. It never shows us, uh, you know, even a basic outline of the waveform. We just get this sort of box thing here, um, and uh, we can adjust the loop, the start and end points, and the size like that. There we go. So. This is my little looping region. So this here, these lines uh, denote 
the start and end of the sample itself. So it starts off backwards, hits that looping region, and then just loops around inside there. So I can move that looping region around. Make it very small. Now there are different looping options. Uh, I'm not going to go into everything that you can do with the Profit X uh, and the way you manipulate stuff. Um, one thing I will show you though is the fact that you can uh, set a crossfade region. So, you know, when you when you start to loop, um, you're going to start hearing little glitches, uh, and it's not going to, you know, from 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 that position in the sample to that position, it's not going to blend well. And you don't have the ability to go and zoom into the waveform itself and choose points in the waveform that, that you think it will work best at. So you have a crossfade capability, uh, and that's what this control is here. And it basically smooths out that transition of end of loop region back to beginning of loop region again. When I said before that you can't get at the samples inside these instruments, there is one way that you can get at it, um, and that is by choosing a note, playing a sample, and then pressing a button called Sample Stretch, and that'll take that one sample and stretch it across the keyboard for you. But obviously you're dealing with a single sample across the entire keyboard. Um, it's only going to sound good within a certain sort of like limited range. I mean, all samples generally sound only good within a certain limited range. Um, and you're obviously, you're taking it out of the instrument basically uh, to work with it on its own. You're not able to add other samples to it or, or manipulate it along with other samples in any way. So that's the only way that you can actually isolate samples. It's, it's good to be able to do it for, for you know, certain applications. Um, but it's not going to be the same as accessing the samples inside the instruments themselves. So reversing samples, looping samples, setting start and end points and looping regions, this is all standard stuff um, and the Prophet X does it well. It, it has got a very limited screen but despite that it's still very very workable. I mean the only way that really that the Quantum and the Iridium sort of trump the Prophet X is that you can do all this manipulation of looping and reversing on a sample by sample basis. So you could create um, a, an instrument, a, you know, a preset on your on your synth, where some of the samples play forwards to back, but other samples play back to front. Some loop and some don't. You can create some really complex and interesting sounds uh, by mixing it all up uh, on a per sample basis on the Waldorf synths, which you can't do on the Prophet X. So when it comes to sampling, it's not just about the big orchestral sounds and guitars and choirs and that kind of thing. Um, as we've seen, uh, 8DO have concentrated, you know, since the release of the Prophet X, they've concentrated in terms of add-ons to give us vintage synth sounds, Jupiter 4s, Arc 2600s, Prophet 5s and stuff like that. So, you know, you can use these two um, sample generator, sorry, sample playback uh, oscillators as regular oscillators to play regular waveforms. But there are some limitations that you do need to be aware of if you're going to do that. Um, now, if you look here at the, the digital oscillator section here, you'll see that there is a sync button to sync 
um, hard sync the phases of oscillators 1 and 2. It's only oscillators 1 and 2. It won't affect uh, the sample generating oscillators at all. Uh, there's no way to get uh, uh, you know, phase sync uh, with those and that's a shame because it's quite straightforward to be able to do that in software if you want to. Similarly, you know, we have the infamous slop control here as is the case with all profit synths. Um, as you can see there, it just says one and two. The slop control will not uh, add any sort of you know, semi-random uh, detune drift uh, to the sample generating oscillators at all, which is a real shame. You know, you've got like, uh, you know, some wonderful Jupiter 4 and ARP 2600 and Profit 5 samples here, um, but the slop control won't work with those oscillators, and I really don't understand why that's the case, but it, it's, it is what it is. Uh, and another um, limitation that you really should be aware of is the glide control. The glide control doesn't work with sampled instruments at all. Um, so, you know, if you set up a patch, you've got some oscillators in there and you've got uh, some sampled instruments as well, and you want to use some portamento or some glide, uh, you'll just hear the digital oscillators gliding. The sample uh, oscillators uh, won't glide at all. The only way that I've found to get a sample to, to have glide is to do the sample stretch thing, take a single sample, spread it across the entire keyboard, and then you've got a glide capability. I really don't know why they have uh, not implemented glide for the uh, sample oscillators. Uh, I just don't understand that. But those are some uh, limitations that you do need to be aware of. Right, so when it comes to importing uh, samples into the Profit X or the XL, uh, you're going to need to use some software to do that. Uh, not actually to do the import itself, but to prepare the instrument. Put your samples inside an instrument, uh, set the, sort of the key mappings, the velocity mappings, etc., um, and, and prepare it. Uh, it's basically in a zip file format by the time you've finished. Then you need to put that onto a USB stick and then import it into your synth. So I'm gonna show you uh, three different pieces of software, the three different pieces of software that are currently available uh, that allow you to do this instrument creation. The first one I'm gonna show you is the official piece of software. It's uh, on the 8DO's website. Um, this is the website here. You actually buy it, uh, but it costs nothing. Um, and uh, it's got some nice graphics here and uh, some descriptions on how it works, uh, which is all very positive. Uh, when you do actually buy it and you get sent your email with the download links, it mentions all over that email, beta. Uh, it's a beta piece of software. I don't know if that's accurate or not because I think the software has been around for quite a while now. Um, but anyway, this is what the software looks like. Here it is. Um, and basically what you can do, uh, over here on the right hand side, I've just got a, a, a file explorer window open with some samples in it. I can just select some samples and just drag them in. Um, and it's, it's, it's as easy as that. <laughs> it's not all easy. But it's as easy as that. Now your samples need to be 48 kilohertz, 16-bit samples. Uh, otherwise, uh, the software will not uh, allow you to drag them into it. Or you can go uh, via um, uh, import and go and find your files and import them one at a time. But basically, you'll get a list of WAV files uh, and uh, they will be mapped to your keyboard somehow. Now, obviously, you can select uh, a particular sample, you can move it around. You'll see that little black uh, sort of blob on the key there. That is showing you the root note 
um, the current root note of your sample. Um, and I can expand this, uh, contract it within a certain range. It won't go uh, over the whole keyboard, will it? There are a few quirks with it. Um, I'm going to say, I think it, I think it's uh, limited to two octave range, maybe. Um, but you'll see here on the right hand side, um, sort of like what I'm doing. Um, this is the file name. This is the sample I've got here. It's showing the low note, the high note. It's showing the root note. Now these um, parameters here are not for this sample. They are for the instrument as a whole. I'll, I'll get onto those in a second. So as I move between these uh, samples, you'll see that these parameters at the top here are changing. Um, so there are some limitations to this software. Um, the first limitation is you can't create velocity layers with it. You, you have one sample occupying the space here um, and that's it. There's no parameter here over the right hand side for you to set uh, what velocity range your sample responds to. Um, so there are no velocity layers. It doesn't support that. It doesn't support um, round robins either. You can't have more than one uh, sample stacked up. Um, you can't individually tune your samples here. Uh, it's very, very basic. I mean, you know, just wanting to do my first porting of a sample library across to the, of, a, of a guitar, um, I want round robins, uh, I want velocity layers, and I want to be able to fine tune, and I can't do it here. So this, <clears throat> this software really is, is very, very basic, um, which is a shame because it is the official software that you, you know, you're meant to use. Um, what else can I say about it? There's another limitation, unfortunately. Sorry for being so critical. But you'll see here, um, select this one, move it around. You see this root note. Now, the limitation is that root note has to be within this range. Um, I can't have um, a sample that's, that's root note is C4, for example, but place it down this end of the keyboard. Uh, every uh, sample, the, your range here in the screen, the root note has to be within its its note range, which kind of makes sense for very sort of you know for a lot of applications um, that you'd want that root note to be somewhere in the range that you're playing it, uh, but not always. Uh, you know when you look at some of the uh, a lot actually of the instruments that are available in the factory library on the Prophet X, you get a lot of one shots. Uh, so, you know, every single note has got a different uh, sample, but they're all hopefully, you know, within the same tuning, although they're not always, um, but, they're, but they're tuned. Now, you can't create those kind of one-shot instruments here because um, as you build up your samples, each one is going to have to have a different root note. So, from that point of view, um, it, it's it's limited. It's limited in in many ways. Now let's just get on to actually creating our um, our instrument out of this 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 tool. That's when we have to look at these uh, last sets of parameters here. We've got one to say whether it's mono or stereo, and here is where we have the categorization. So this should be familiar to you by now. This is the category you set the one single category that this particular instrument is going to fit into. You've got that choice of 17 here. Um, and after that, you have got two um, parameters here. Basically, the name of an instrument is actually in two parts. Uh, there's a sound set part and an instrument name part. Uh, I didn't really sort of like point that out when we're scrolling through, but uh, you might have seen, for example, um, uh, the electric grand piano, the CP70, uh, but short notes, and then another one soft or, or whatever it is. So, you know, there's variations on your instrument. So what I would do, for example, if I was creating uh, my, my nylon um, guitar uh, sample set here is I'd call the sample set nylon, give it the name, and then maybe this one would be harmonics. And then maybe I'd set up, create another instrument which is nylon, but plucked or strummed or, or whatever else I want to have. So that's how you can sort of like give us sort of a common, uh, consistent naming to your instruments. Uh, f the first part being being the common, consistent part. So you give your um, your instrument a name, and here is 
Here's the bit I don't like. Uh, you actually define which user bank it's going to go into right now in this screen. Um, so I choose user bank number four. Uh, the thing is, all right, so if I'm creating my own samples, I'm never going to share them with anyone else. I'm never going to sell them to anyone else. Um, I can look on my profit X and I can make sure that my user bank number four uh, is empty, or if it's got anything in it, that it's not going to be something that uh, is going to conflict with this particular instrument. Um, that's fair enough, I guess. But if I want to create a library and then share it with other people or sell it, uh, how do I know which bank to choose? If I, if I choose bank number four um, and I give it to you, uh, how do I know that your, your user bank number four is, is, has got stuff in it already, that I'm not going to overwrite it? I mean, it's a really, really serious, for me, limitation this is. It really is. It's going to create a massive headache as soon as I start to share or sell my uh, sample libraries to other Profit X owners because um, I have to fix in this file that I generate that bank and there's no way of changing it. Um, and actually, as you'll see here <laughs> with this software, this is the latest version of the software that I've got. I just downloaded it about a month ago. Um, the user banks go from zero up to seven. So there's eight user banks here, um, seven being the max. Now, when I showed you my Profit X earlier, you saw that I had a user bank number 30. And that's because there was a firmware update at the beginning of 2020 that expanded the number of user banks that are available to you. But their software doesn't reflect that. Uh, it's been almost a year since that firmware came out, nine, well, 11 months. Um, and their tool doesn't support more than uh, eight user banks. So you can see that this tool is, is not really up to date uh, and, it's, and it's not as good as it could be. But thankfully there are uh, two other options available to you. Let's take a look at those. Right, let's have a look at the second tool. Now this is from a website called thinkersnacks.com. Strange name, sounds like an anagram for something. I don't know what. Uh, Thinkersnacks, I don't know anything about Thinkersnacks, um, but they have something called a PX Toolkit. Um, there's, there's a lot of uh, interest in it and talk about it in the Gear Sluts forum. And uh, it is free and available. We're on version 1.1.5 here. Uh, this is the website, the web page. There's the update history. Nice to see a nice history of updates, uh, quotes, uh, other stuff. They also do some sample libraries uh, as well, some free ones. Um, and there you go. So thinkersnacks.com, ProfitX Toolkit. Uh, let's have a look at it. Here it is. It's um, a very modest looking screen, quite similar to the um, the uh, official 8DO one. Um, and again, we can take some samples and drag them. Boom. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is a better tool than the 8DO tool although I find that the interface is quite fiddly. So when we drag stuff in there, um, it's sort of like squished everything together here. This is a selected sample here. I think I can take this. I haven't actually prepared myself for this video. Let me see if I can remember how to do it. You can drag and hit, use the control key and drop samples onto each other to create velocity layers like that. Um, that's another one. Ooh, that's another one there. Yeah. So you can create velocity layers. So here we've got a velocity layer. Look at the right hand side here. Um, it's showing the key range. 
Uh, it's showing the velocity uh, range as well, going from 67 to 127. So this is the higher velocity. This one is the lower velocity, going from 1 to 66. And you can adjust that just by dragging a mouse. So it can create velocity layers, which is brilliant. Um, the 8D01 doesn't do that. And you can create round robins, I believe. Can I drop that onto there? Yes, I can. So once I've got my velocity layer going on here, here now I've actually got two samples. So when I select this top one, we just see the one sample here. When I select this bottom one, we're actually seeing two samples here. So this is a much, much better tool. Uh, it really is. Uh, and the, the porting of um, my guitar samples over to uh, the Profit X Sense, I used this tool for it. Um, because it did exactly what I needed it to do. A little bit of a fiddly user interface, but it works. And the other great thing about it is that here you can actually uh, fine tune the tuning, the pitch of each of your samples, plus and minus, it's in sense here. So that, that again is really, really helpful. As soon as you have samples that are just need a little bit of an adjustment, then here. The trouble is, of course, uh, well, the trouble is to really know whether you've got them right. You need to create your instrument, uh, stick it on your USB stick, put it into your synth, get it up on your synth, and then try it out and see if you've got the tuning right or not, and then make more adjustments. So it is a fiddly process. It would be much nicer if you could do this on the synth itself, uh, which you can do with a Waldorf a Quantum or an Iridium, but never mind. Um, but this tool is, is a great um, you know, improvement over the official one. Uh, when it comes to actually creating your um, your instrument file here again, you see at the top here, uh, these are the parameters that you need to set. Uh, this is your user group, and it's nice to see. Oop. Can I grab over that side? I'll just scroll with my mouse. You'll see here. Uh, now that's it. It goes up to 32. So there's a maximum of 32 uh, user groups. You'll see here uh, that you set your user group. Um, it's, uh, this is not the fault of the tool, it's just the fault of the Profit X sample implementation here, but the group number is uh, zero based. So user bank number one is actually U00, uh, but never mind. Um, but yeah, so you set your user group, then you set your category, which is these 17 categories that we've seen before, guitar, then you set your instrument um, name and I forgot to actually show you in the original tool but you actually set the number as well and this is as well as hard coding the uh, the user bank your and the category and the category are fair enough uh, but you're actually hard coding the the instrument slot number inside that bank so you have to give it a number I don't know why I missed that showing you the uh, the previous tool but you have to do that and then we've got, you know, uh, this is a sample set. And then we'd have down here, harmonics. Um, and that's what we do. And then I click that button and it'll create me um, a file, basically a zip file in a f with a folder structure in it. Um, so, you know, it's, it's again, it's not the fault of the tool. It's the fault of the whole, uh, the way that you have to generate these files to put them in your synth. You're having to hard code a user bank and you're having to hard code a uh, instrument slot within the category. So if this slot in this category in this user bank is already used up, when then when I import this into my synth, it will overwrite whatever is there. But anyway, that's that tool. Let's come on to the third one. Right, the third and final piece of software uh, that you can use to create these instruments. It's a commercial third-party piece of software 
uh, meaning that you need to put your hand in your pocket and pay for this piece of software. Um, I'm not going to go through and talk about it in any detail. I'm not reviewing it in any way. Um, I have it through necessity <laughs> because uh, I needed to try and find ways of getting my samples into uh, my Profit Excel here. Um, I'm not completely enamored with this software considering how much it costs. I have to say that um, the idea is that it is supposed to make your life really, really easy and automate tasks for you. Uh, and the reality is um, that it could be better than it is. But that's all I want to say about it. Here I have got a, um, a project open where I've got my bunch of samples that I've created here. Um, now the reason why you would want to use this software really is because this software is good at detecting and, and implementing loop points within your samples. And those loop points, once it's detected them here, you'll see here there's, there's a note on, a note off, and there's a loop start and a loop end. Um, once it's detected and set those loop points and you're happy with them, then those loop points end up being preserved when you create your instrument and then you import it into your into your Profit X. So you will have pre-looped um, you know, instruments with all the samples pre-looped rather than having to sort of try and manually do them yourself you know, across all of the, all the samples all in one go. So that's the real benefit of this tool that the other tools don't have. Although with the original 8DO tool, uh, you can get it to call out to a third party audio editor, uh, WAV file editor, and create loop points there. I don't know whether those loop points then get preserved or not, but they certainly do get preserved with Sample Robot, which is the reason why I've got it. Um, now, the reason why you're paying a fair amount of money for this piece of software is because of its export options. When I go export here, you'll see I can save it in all of these different formats. Uh, and that is the big benefit of this software. Uh, you know, the specific formats that we need for a, a Blofeld or for contact or or for whatever else in the list. And you'll see down the bottom here, we've got sequential profit X with a zip file format. Um, and so here we are, um, we go through this little sort of like um, sort of menu here. Um, it's gotta be 48 kilohertz, it's gotta be 16 bits. If your samples in Sample Robot are not in that format, then it will actually resample for you and create that format, which is, which is nice to have as well. Um, and once we've done that, we then specify where we're going to actually uh, save our file to, and then we get to this screen. And this screen, um, I wish it was one where it would remember what I put in here, <laughs> but it doesn't. But you know, then then we have the familiar. Uh, okay, I choose my 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 category out of the 17 different things that I've got here. Um, then I specify my user bank, zero based number. Uh, does it go up to 32? Yes, it does. So oh, it goes up to 31 because this is the zero, <laughs> zero based user bank. Uh, so you set your user bank, then you have to set your program number, which is not zero based. It's not one based, it is two based because that's the first number you can have <laughs> is number two. It's all rather crazy. It's not Sample Robot's fault. Um, then you give the first part of the name that's why I'd say nylon here, and then I'd give my, I don't know, plucked or whatever I'm doing here. And as you can see here, it creates a, um, a, a folder path starting with PX, then it's got the bank, then it's got the category, and then it's got the name of the zip file. Um, I think you can edit the bank, I think, possibly, afterwards once it's been created and rename it. Uh, but there are, I don't think you can rename the, or change the number or something like that because it creates a zip file and inside that zip file are also references to uh, the particular slot where the, where the instrument is gonna go. Um, so it is not recommended you edit your zip file manually after you've finished with it. Um, but as you can see, uh, it's the same set of parameters each time. Uh, and my main criticism with, with all three of these tools is the fact that you are having to hard code the user bank and the program, the instrument number in that file when you create it. I think it's a bit of a shame. Anyway, so that is Sample Robot. I mean, the, the last thing I really want to say here is that 
I know for a fact that Dave Smith and Sequential, they shy away from um, providing any software for their synthesizers, librarians or, or editors or anything like that. And in, for a very long time, they have relied on a third party who they must have a close relationship with, a third party sound tower, I believe they are, for creating editors for their synths. And that is an arrangement that has worked um, because at the end of the day, the synth doesn't need software. You can, you can, you know, your Prophet 6 or your OB6 or your Rev2, whatever it is, you don't need any software. It's a standalone instrument. You can play it. If you want the editor, there's the editor. And, and Sequential don't actually have any uh, commitment to you to provide any software. But here with the Prophet X and the Prophet XL, you need software. Yes, you don't have to try importing any of your own samples into it but it can do it, and why wouldn't you want it? So you need software to really complete this instrument. Um, and Sequential aren't providing that software. ADO are providing it, but as you can see, the software is kind of out of date. It says it's beta, well you didn't see that, but in the email it says it's beta. It's the most basic possible software going. You can't create uh, you know, velocity layers, you can't create round robins with it, you can't tune your samples. Um, it's, it's, it's inadequate as software goes, and that is the official software. Um, so you're relying on some third party who created one, you know, without, you know, without actually demanding you pay for it or, or anything, which is fantastic of them to do so, but what's the commitment that they will keep that going in the future? And then you've got some commercial software here from Sample Robot. I mean, the thing is, how many of us have, have got a keyboard or a synth of some, you know, of some age that we can't use anymore because um, the software that you need in order to be able to, to, to edit it or, or the drivers uh, for MIDI or for audio, or whatever it is, uh, are just no longer the latest versions and, and, and don't work with the latest uh, versions of Windows and Mac OS, etc. I mean, how many of us have basically ended up just selling gear or chucking it away because it's not the actual hardware's fault that it doesn't work anymore. It's the interactivity with the latest operating system. You know, it's a commitment to actually produce and provide software. You're going to have to keep on updating it. Every time Mac, uh, Apple comes out with a new version of uh, their Mac operating system, every time Windows gets upgraded, you're going to need to keep maintaining that software. And it's a commitment that does not exist with the Prophet X and XL. Um, and so, you know, can you imagine in 10 years time that you can't actually get any more samples inside unless you've got an old Windows 10 PC that you've kept uh, from, from back in 2020? I mean, that is a potential for, for this particular instrument. And uh, I think that uh, this particular instrument, there needs to be a commitment, an official commitment for official piece of software that has got all the functionality available to you uh, that we can use uh, with our very expensive synthesizers because let's face it these are not cheap end of rant let's move on Right, so this is the point in the video that I've reached where I really need to sort of like wrap it up and come up with some conclusions and summaries. Uh, it's been a long journey to get to this point and I really, really do appreciate you coming on that journey with me and, and making it to the end. Um, how can I summarize the Prophet X? I think that my criticisms uh, that I've made in this video, I think that a lot of Prophet X owners will be looking at this video and saying, I don't know what you're talking about, Tim. I don't have those criticisms. Uh, you know, you're being, you're being too hard. And I think that it ends up being about how you use the synthesizer. You know, you've got 150 gigabytes of samples 
factory supplied samples by HDO in the synthesizer. You've got a really cool synth engine, lots of modulation possibilities, and you've got some great effects at the end of the signal path. You know, with what you've got in this synth, you could spend the rest of your life uh, discovering sounds, uh, creating beautiful, breathtaking sounds, uh, chilling, crazy sounds. You can do anything you want with what you've got in the box. Uh, and no criticism at all. But at the end of the day, if you want to take it that step further, if you want to start doing your own sampling, if you want to use this as a platform for your own samples, you know, your own creations from scratch, that's the point when you sort of like enter a world of frustration. Uh, you know, you're taking two steps forward, one step back. You, you'll end up doing some head scratching and saying, well, why, why have I got these limitations? Why did they do it like this? And for someone like myself who has a quantum and an iridium where i really do believe uh, i haven't really said this and praised it enough in in a video but i really do believe that they've done sampling so so well in those synthesizers they've got it so right from the word go uh it's you know comparing the prophet x to those synths the prophet x is never going to match uh you know that level of perfection in terms of what they've got in those synthesizers so, you know, that's another aspect of why I'm more critical about the Prophet X than maybe I would be, certainly I would be, if I'd never owned a Quantum or an Iridium. Um, so, for me, you know, the criticisms, the frustrations come from doing my own samples, trying to get my own samples inside the synth. Uh, and then, you know, from a commercial aspect, uh, looking at whether I can actually put together samples, libraries and sample sets and, and presets and actually sell them. Again, you know, my frustrations get kind of multiplied at that point because there's so much capability here, there's so much potential here, and it's kind of sort of, you know, it's handicapped uh, in, in a way that it, it, it doesn't need to be. I mean, I'm really, I really would love to see Dave Smith and Sequential and Trolls of 8DO, I'd really love them to see them get together and do a, a new version of a Prophet X, a, a Prophet X times two, or a Prophet triple X, or whatever you want to call it. I'd love to see them get together, sort of like take the best parts of what they've got here, learn from what they've what they've put together, and and give us a real killer sampling synth. I would love to see that happen. But as it, it's a sort of a, a collaboration between those two companies will they come together and do that i just don't know it'd be great to see it you know if you take a company like um electron for example you know they're really into sampling and synthesis and sequencing uh you know and maybe some of their earlier products uh, weren't that great but they they you know they build on that on on the success and the good parts of what they've developed and they build better and better and better products uh, you know, they're, they're, they're refining what they do because that's their core business. And, and I'd love to see a new version of the Prophet X in the future that, sort of, that takes this technology or this, this amalgamation of two technologies and, and moves it forward. Uh, I'd love to see it. Uh, whether we'll ever see that, I don't know. Um, I have my doubts, to be honest, but that's a shame. So there we go. That's my uh, summary of the synth. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, sitting here in front of this Prophet XL, playing it has been a, you know, a really inspiring experience. I've just been creating music, music, music with it, creating sounds with it, uh, and that's the most important thing. At the end of the day, it's about does this instrument inspire you? Uh, does it make you want to sit down in front of it and create sounds and create music? And for me, it's an absolute big tick. Yes, it does. So that's it. That is my review of the Prophet X and Prophet XL. I really do hope you enjoyed it. Until the next one, as always, thank you very, very much for watching.